Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. This one's going to be pretty quick. It's on something I've always been kind of aware of in the back of my head, but I've never really thought about until recently. And it's about getting yourself some cheap, quick storage. Um, and as many of you know, for the past forever, people have been buying these things and these things, myself included. This is a 500 gigabyte external hard drive. It's USB 3.0 that I purchased for about 50 or 60 bucks. And this is a 32 gig USB 3.0 uh, flash drive that I purchased for about 10 bucks as well. And usually when you buy these, there's nothing wrong with them, you know, they work pretty great. Uh, if you get USB 3.0, these things will be not t terribly fa fast. And these ones will be a little bit faster, maybe even though they're hard drives. And you can even buy external SSDs. But if you're like me, you probably have an awful lot of just hard drives and SSDs lying around that you're not using from old laptops, old this or old that. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you a really quick, easy way to get some cheap external storage, as well as some uh, tips and tricks for setting up this storage. So to begin with, some technical details. On this drive, I get about 50 megabytes, maybe 60 read and write. And this device, I get about 100 megabytes read and about 15 megabytes per second write, which is not too great. So on Amazon, I saw this. It's a ten dollar, two point five inch drive enclosure. It's USB three. Basically, what you do is you plug in your two point five inch drive in here, and you can plug any drive you want want into it. You can plug any drive you want. It's ten bucks. Plop a spare hard drive in it, and you get storage space out of it. So it opens up just like that. It's not even any screws. It slides off. And there you have it. This hard drive was from my Lenovo laptop I bought a few years back. It's one terabyte, it's 5400 RPM. It was kind of slow for a computer's primary hard drive, but for an external hard drive, it's actually pretty nice. I was otherwise not going to use it for anything, but it felt silly to have a slow 500 gig hard drive in that thing right there, and to have a one terabyte drive I wasn't even using. I was even contemplating pulling this thing apart and putting my own drive in it, but it's really not made for that. It might have firmware on it that only accepts certain drives, and it might really not like the process physically of being taken apart. So this device received about 150 megabytes per second read and write, which is, you know, it's probably two or three times this device. And the read is probably about 50% faster than this, and the write is about 10 times faster than this. And it costs less than this and about the same amount as that, because I just had this hard drive lying around. I also got a 64 gig SSD lying around. This was to my gaming PC a few years back that I've upgraded with a 256 gig. And with this device plugged in there, it gets about 250 megabytes per second read and about probably 200 write, which is pretty great. SSD is usually plugged in via SATA or a little bit quicker than that, but if you have spare drives lying around, the gist of this video is plug them into one of these things and you'll get a lot of storage out of it. I recommend it to all of you. Now, if you're, if you're like me and you've pulled a drive out of a computer, there's probably some steps you're going to have to take to actually make it mountable storage. If you just plug into one of these guys that you bought, and you plug it into your computer, you're going to see something a little bit like this. So I just went ahead and I took a hard drive from a laptop and I plugged it into this external enclosure. I'm going to plug it in to show you what happens. So if you plug it in, your disk should come up pretty nicely. However, there's a little bit of a technicality to it. You see your disk, you say, okay, great, my disk showed up, I can save files to it. But there's more to it than that. If you're using Windows, I recommend a program called Disk Management. You type in diskmgmt.msc into the Start menu, and you start that up, and a little console will appear. This is great for managing your disks in general. This is a disk my computer is actually running off of. This is a secondary disk, and this is the hard drive I just plugged in with my USB. And again, that's a laptop hard drive, basically just sitting in that external enclosure plugged into my system. So what's happening is that, great, I have my 80 gig disk, and this is what, what actually shows up in Windows Explorer is local disk E, right? But there's all this stuff here that you just don't need, and it might even have boot data on it that if you plug into a computer while it's trying to boot, it might try to start up from the old installation that you basically pulled out of your laptop into the enclosure. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick for removing that. Uh, if you look at the disk, in disk management, it'll have a disk number, and this one's number two. So a good little trick is to start up a command prompt with CMD and type disk 
part. It kind of starts like a command line interface version of this menu here, except you can do a little bit more with it because you can't really delete these partitions uh, just by right clicking on them. So if you, type in, if you type in list disk, it'll show you the exact same thing that's shown here, just in a command line environment. And what you want to do is you want to take that disk, disk2, and you want to clean all this crap off it and just make a new partition so that you get all your uh, data storage capacity available to you and it, it doesn't confuse your computer when you try to boot with your USB plugged in. So you type in select or cell for short, disk2. Make sure you're selecting the right one. If you, if you select the wrong disk, you can delete all the data on a disk you don't want to delete. If you type in clean, it removes everything off that disk. So after I do that, this disk is now completely blank. Now you'll notice if you go into your uh, Windows Explorer, there's nothing in here. It disappeared. Where'd it go? It's still there, but it's not there. That's because there's no volume on it. It's not formatted and you have no mount point and it's not even initialized. So what you have to do is you have to go to the disk and go to initialize disk. Uh, MBR GPT, I'm not going to explain that. If it's under two terabytes, use MBR. So you do that and then you make a volume on it. And this is where you give the volume its label uh, and also mount point. You can, mount it, you can mount it as drive E. I'm gonna call it 80 gigabyte. That's not supposed to happen. Ignore that, that's kind of not really even a big deal. But, so it goes ahead and formats. And as soon as that's done, you have your drive that you can mount. Every you plug in, this is what shows up, and this is what's actually on the drive. You don't have any of those other partitions with operating system information still on them. You just have a clean, simple partition taking up your entire drive that you can read and write to. And that's as simple as it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it uh, offered up some information to you. I know it wasn't really the most mind-blowing video. It's like, oh, you can buy a little hard drive enclosure and plug hard drives into it. But it's something that's great to be aware of because it's going to come in handy for me at least. And just an idea for you to keep in mind. So if you liked it, please like and subscribe. If you feel like it, I'm not going to push you to. I'm not going to be too uh, shamelessly self-promoting. But there you have it. So thank you for watching. As always, I say that. And as always, I say... Hope to see you in my next videos.